हाँ गए सर आम ऑर्डर में Uh, guys, uh, please tell us some more. We we'll start the video later in a couple of minutes. Uh, if it's audible, you can put it in the chat box also. Uh, a couple of minutes. I'll be able to hear you. Okay. Uh, Okay, fine. Uh, please, I think I'm audible. So uh, let's move on. I, if you want to convey anything to me, you can always put it in the chat box. Um, so let's proceed. We are starting with the video tutorial for Code Forces round 883. Uh, so I felt it was a very balanced round and a very nice round for a Div3 contest. Uh, the round had uh, eight problems. Uh, problem E had two subdivisions, as you can see, uh, and problem G was a bit easier than problem F. Uh, uh, I felt because Problem F has uh, somewhat uh, lesser solves than problem G. Anyways, uh, saying this, uh, let's move on. Uh, so, uh, we we'll start with the first problem. Now, uh, I'll let you read the question for a while. Maybe I'll check the chat also. Anyways, uh, saying this, uh, let's move on. Okay, seems fine. Okay, um, so what is the first problem saying? Uh, the first problem is Rudolph and cut the rope. Okay, okay. Uh, let me open my solution for this. Okay, uh, so uh, basically what are we doing here? Uh, so we have uh, some, a bunch of ropes basically. Uh, we know that all of the positions of the ropes, so I'll just draw the rope like this. We just assume it's a, uh, uh, so this is not a rope really, this is a number line. In this number line we have a bunch of points. All of the points are at some AI. So uh, if you look at this, this will be some uh, some A0 or something. Or I'm not sure what letters they are using. Okay, they are using AIs, right. So this is some A0. Uh, you will have some A1 here, you will have some uh, A2 over here, etc, etc. Right? Okay, uh, right. Now, uh, when will the candy fall? Right? Uh, so we have a candy here and uh, let's look at the condition in which the candy will fall. Okay, um, so we have a candy uh, that is attached to a bunch of ropes. So uh, as you can see, uh, the candy might be something like this, or it might be somewhere in the middle also. It uh, really depends a lot. But anyways, uh, I've drawn the candy like this. You can see that there are various rope lengths here. So uh, this will be, let's say, uh, B0, this will be uh, B1, and uh, this will be B2. Of course, beta will be taut because the rope really goes upwards, uh, but even that shouldn't be a problem for us. Okay, um, so we have this uh, particular condition here. Now let's see how we can solve this problem. So uh, I'm going to make a claim here. So let's uh, start cutting the ropes. Okay, we'll think about what are all the various ropes we have to cut. Uh, so like what is the uh, case here? We have to make the candy fall to the ground, but you have to notice that uh, the ground is at uh, zero level really, right? Uh, because the ith nail dri is driven AI uh, meters above the ground, so the ground will be somewhere over at the 0th level. Now, if we want to make it fall to the 0th level, then what should we do? Right? Uh, I think it's a fairly simple case. Uh, so, there are only two possibilities here. Either a particular uh, nail can be carrying the candy like this, okay? Or it could be flat like this, like it could be. Uh, not taut basically, the uh, rope would be relaxed in that case. Now, uh, this case is fine because it's on the ground. This case is not fine. Right? So, uh, what is the condition here? This is A and this is B. So, if uh, A minus B is uh, positive, then we have to cut the rope. But otherwise, we don't have to cut the rope. So, uh, am I being clear in this? Uh, so that's the final case here. Based on this, I think it's fairly easy to count. So we just count all the ropes for which the value of A minus B is positive. So the value of the uh, position of the nail minus the value of the length of the rope that has to be positive. If that's positive, we have to cut the rope. Um, so I hope I'm being clear in that. So uh, let me show you my uh, code also. My code is fairly simple, I think. Uh, rep is my macro for a for loop. 
So instead of writing for i equals 0, uh, i less than n and i plus plus, I just use this uh, small macro here. I'm just collecting the a and b values. Uh, I have a variable called count. That's really how many cuts I have to make. And I'm checking if uh, a minus b is positive, then I'm just uh, cutting that particular row. And in the end, we're just outputting it. So I hope that's clear, right? Uh, any doubts? Any doubts you can ask in the chat box also. Uh, the live stream chat is visible. Okay, we have uh, 10 viewers, okay. That's pretty good. Um, okay, uh, anyways, right. Uh, this is the first time we're trying this, so uh, like, we'll see how this goes, but yeah. Okay. Okay, right, uh, let's keep going. So let's move on to question two, uh, which is tic tac two. Okay, uh, so we have this tic tac two game, uh, and we are saying that uh, it's just a regular um, XO game, we might call it, or tic tac two game, and it has classic rules. And there's a third player also. That player has pluses. Okay. Uh, now the game is won by the player who makes a horizontal, vertical, or uh, diagonal row of threes of the symbols. First thing is they are the people who said the question. They themselves are saying that exactly one of the players won it. We might not know which player won it, but exactly one of the players won it, uh, and that makes our life significantly easier. Um, so, for question B, right? Uh, this is true for any uh, XO game or any tic tac toe game. There are only eight different straight lines you can make in this grid. So let's count all of them. You might have one like this. Uh, this is two. This is three. So three are horizontal. Uh, three are vertical. Something like this, and uh, now two are diagonal. So one you might have like this, and one you might have like this. Two are diagonal. So you have a total of eight possibilities. So what we are doing, we are iterating over all of the eight possibilities uh, bluntly, and I think that should work. Uh, so I think I can directly show you the code for this. I think it's a pretty simple code. Mm, okay. So we're just taking the input uh, input array here, right? So input will be an array of strings. Uh, so why are we using an array of strings? Uh, that's because they're giving all characters, like all the x, o, and all are characters here. So we have to use an array of strings. Okay. Uh, so it'll have something like uh, like the first row will be a string, second row will be a string, and the third row will be a string. So based on this, we can uh, see the thing here. This is my code for horizontal checking. So, how are we checking horizontally? We are uh, iterating over all of the rows here. Okay, if i equals zero, that means we are in the uh, first row, uh, the the zeroth row technically. But uh, anyways, so if i equals zero, we are in the zeroth row of the tic tac toe game, and then uh, we just iterating over pause. You might wonder what is pause. Uh, pause is my plus x or zero set. So that's just my set of plus x or zero. Uh, it's just iterating over all the three different layers. Okay. I have a variable called count. Uh, this count variable, I'm just iterating over all of my columns. So uh, let's say I've selected the ith row, right? So let's say I've selected uh, this ith row. If I selected the ith row, uh, like let's say I have a plus here, plus here, plus here also. In that case, my count will be three, okay? Uh, and count being three is good because that means we have a straight line here. So we can just cross the straight line. So uh, if count is three, we are done. So we're just outputting whatever character that is, okay? Uh, now next up, what are we doing? We're doing the same thing for columns. So uh, j, uh, like j goes from zero to three, uh, that's just the various columns, and we are doing the exact same check in this code. Uh, I should probably maximize this a bit. I'll zoom this a bit. Hopefully, that's a bit clearer. But yeah, okay. Uh, okay, wait. Uh, there, okay, there are a couple of things in the chat box also. Okay. Uh, okay, wait. Uh, okay, I'll look at it in a while. Hmm. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of questions. Um, I, I'll come to that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll have a look at the chat box in a while. But uh, anyways, for now we'll have a look at the diagonal case also. The diagonal case is again fairly easy to check. We're just checking if array i i is equal to c. If there is equal to c, then also we are done. So we're just outputting that. And then the final uh, off diagonal. So this thing check the on diagonal. There's one more off diagonal. Off diagonal. How do we check? It's array i two minus i. So uh, why are we checking array i two minus i? Uh, we are really checking that because uh, it will cover elements like array zero two, like it will cover array zero two, right? Uh, it will cover array zero and then two, uh, array one and array one, and array uh, two and zero. 
so i hope i am being clear on that so uh, and then in that case we are outputting it now if none of these things happen then i wouldn't have returned in any of these cases that means it's a draw we are just outputting a draw here right okay now i have a look at your uh, chat box okay uh, right so uh, we have to okay so th- there is one doubt like uh, for the first question i think if a greater than b we are just incrementing the value of count uh, okay uh, i'm not exactly sure why it doesn't work uh, okay a comma b is uh, okay mm. so we're saying a comma b is a map of int uh, input uh, dot split okay uh, okay not exactly sure why it doesn't work uh, maybe we can ask it in the group i think that will be better okay and uh, also there is someone who says that uh, is there a case where someone can uh, definitely win uh, oh uh, no no uh, uh, wait uh, no. there is might not be a case in which someone can definitely win in that case it will be drawing okay uh, also shivam is saying uh, using java uh, no uh, he has done python i think but yeah so uh, maybe c++ works better right i mean i don't know java properly so i'm not very sure i'm not very sure of python also but fine uh um, mohit is saying that uh python has input issues try this dot std in dot read and okay yeah, that might work better but yeah um okay i mean we can also hard code the logic yeah, even that works uh like any, anything works i think what i did made a bit easier implementation but yeah uh, so shall we move on to the next question i hope there aren't any more doubts uh you can put it in the chat box i am assuming there are no more doubts and i'm moving on to the next question um, so we'll go to problem c right uh, again you can uh, pause the uh, the video or sorry not pause the live stream here i'll wait for a couple of minutes you can have a look at the question Hopefully you had a, uh, okay, well, people want to try, okay. Uh, yeah, so, uh, person called Quasar is saying, uh, he hard-coded, uh, like, they are hard-coded everything for the eight cases, it doesn't matter at all. You can even hard-code it, nothing wrong on that. Uh, I think what it makes a bit easier for implementation, but yeah, uh, in anything works, you can hard-code it also. Anyways, uh, all right, okay. So, hopefully you had a look at problem C also. Uh, by the way, guys, you can find the, the links to all the problems in the code for this website itself. So if you do want to have a look at the problem or maybe try it later you can always check that out so hopefully that's clear but okay uh, anyways so let's have a look at the question uh, we are saying rudolph is participant 1 and it's known that uh, m participants will be proposed and the competition is total of h minutes okay right uh, okay so this is problem or c, uh, c right uh, yes problem c not d okay uh, so in problem c uh, so let's first of all uh, i'll give you some array and we'll see what is the optimal order of solving problems so uh, i'll just take the same thing in the test case so test case has 20 15 and 110 okay now uh, so let's look at the important thing here right so uh, the first thing is the important thing that uh, matters is that um, okay someone's asking me to show my profile i'll show it after this question uh, let's finish this question right okay um, so let's say our array uh, was 20 15 and 110 and let's say this is the case for rudolf so for uh, rudolf um, his uh, like uh, essentially that uh, t i j right so uh, this is basically t1 so like this is uh, t10 uh, i guess uh, t11 t12 and t13 okay right uh, so we notice that the first tie breaker is the number of problems okay so the most important thing is the number of problems so it's always important that we solve as many problems as possible so uh, noticing that you can see that it's always optimal to solve the the smaller time consuming problem first right because it's always better to solve more problems so we'll sort this array we'll just sort sort this to 15 20 and 110 okay so first part would be to sort this array like this now let's look at uh, what will be my time penalty and uh, how many problems i can solve okay now 15 problems can i uh, solve like the first problem can i solve i can solve can i solve the second problem i can solve that why because these two problems put together take me 35 minutes but can i solve all three of the problems and the answer is no why because that will take me uh, 145 minutes but the thing is they gave the value of h in the question h value in the question was 
that means the entire contest is only 120 minutes that means i cannot uh, solve uh, the third problem okay okay uh, that's fine so you only solve the first two problems right okay now what will be my penalty in this case penalty will be 15 plus 35 so my penalty will be 50 really so am i being uh, clear in that so my total penalty will be uh, 50 so essentially that's just uh, the sum of uh, the timings of the problems at which we solved it so now we know how to calculate uh, the penalty uh, and how many problems we solved for a particular person okay so for some person we know how to calculate a uh, number of problems and also the time penalty okay and there is uh, one more like small edge case kind of here where they are saying that uh, if both the time uh, and uh, like if both the points and the penalty are the same then rudolph will take the best place so uh, one more thing that matters is whether it's rudolph or not like uh, even that matters so uh, hopefully i'm being clear in that right okay so i'll have a look at the chat also once uh, okay okay so this is sort of prefix some yeah shivam has given the correct answer i think that's fine uh, but yeah Okay, fine. Uh, I hope that's fine. Right, okay. Um, okay, anyways, fine. Uh, I think uh, that should be uh, the basic idea. Uh, so, so we know that for a person, this many problems we have solved, this much penalty we have, and uh, Rudolph has solved this many things. Okay. Now, what can we do? We can uh, sort, uh, so I'll explain, right? So, we'll store essentially uh, a tuple, if you will. Uh, I mean, C++ doesn't have tuples, it's more like uh, a pair kind of, but, but it doesn't matter. And the point is, uh, number of problems is the first tiebreaker. So, first tiebreaker is points, right? People who have more points come first, and then the next important thing is lesser penalty. They come in higher place, and then Rudolph or not comes in a higher place. Okay? So, uh, how did I code this up? I'll show you the implementation for this. I'll zoom up a bit also. Okay. Right, uh, so I'm storing this thing uh, as a vector of pair of pair and int. So I'll uh, explain this to you. So essentially what I'm uh, doing is I'm storing this thing, okay? Storing the, the essentially uh, more points, less penalty and Rudolph as something like this. So it will be like points, uh, penalty and the index of the player, okay? So I hope I'm being clear in that. Uh, if you look at the code, it might make a bit more sense. So I just have a vector called A uh, that contains the M problems in the contest. I'm just uh, seeing all of them. I'm sorting all of them. Uh, and then here I'm calculating the prefix sum as someone in the chat uh, suggested. I can keep doing this till my uh, sum plus AJ is smaller than H, right? So I just take uh, input for all of those things. And then uh, here you can see I'm calculating penalty. It's the same thing I told you about. I'm just adding all the prefix sums for the penalty. And then to answer, I'm pushing back this thing. I'm pushing back minus penalty. You might be like, why should I push minus penalty and why should I push minus i plus one? Uh, I think that's a fairly simple reason. We want more points, but we want less penalty and we want it to be Rudolph. Rudolph has index one, so we want a lesser index, right? Since we want lesser index and lesser penalty, for implementation what we do is we store negative penalty and negative index. So I hope I be clear in that. Now we have sorted all of these people uh, in the decreasing order. Like so, now what am I doing? I'm sorting this array called answer, but I'm sorting it in the decreasing order. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, PI is my macro for a pair of integer and integer. So I hope that's fine. Yes, I'm uh, sorting this in reverse order. Um, and I'm just looking at the index of uh, of Rudolph. What will be the index of Rudolph? It will be uh, that particular uh, standing at which the answer i dot second. So basically this thing is equal to minus one. That will be Rudolph, right? I'm just outputting that index here. So is that clear? Okay, uh, right. Okay, right, right. Uh, so show me thing to sort them in descending order, yeah. Okay, right. Uh, so I think that's the basic idea for this question. Uh, any doubts? You can put it in the chat box. Or if it's clear, I'll move on to the next question. Right, you can use comparator also, uh, nothing wrong in that, uh, but yeah. Mm. 
but yeah so i, I think uh, that should be fine i don't think that's uh, that big of a deal uh, you can use comparator also really but i think this is just a bit easier to implement there are obviously other ways to do this you can just count how many uh, positions are like smaller than rodolph or uh, even that works but yeah, anyways i think even this should work i know can you uh, let's keep going so we'll move on to problem d problem d i felt was a, a very nice problem so uh, we have rudolph and uh, christmas tree here i think it's a bit more mathy problem uh, but still let's do open right so i'll let you uh, i'll pause the question and uh, you can have a look at the question again guys so all the links to the problems are available so uh, you can use that anytime so hopefully that's clear okay uh, i guess all these links have been shared in our uh, various groups also but yeah fine okay uh, i think that's fine so uh, hopefully you had a look at the problem also okay uh, people are saying no doubts right fine okay anyways uh, right uh, so problem d is very interesting so we, so we have a christmas tree kind of thing here i'll just show you my implementation i think uh, open the implementation also okay i think this is like a bit of a painful problem if you will uh, but yeah it's not very bad i guess okay so for problem d uh it was a christmas tree problem so we had a bunch of uh christmas trees like this something like this we had one more tree like this let's say we had one more tree like this all the trees are the same uh, shape my drawing skills aren't that good so i guess uh, it's, it doesn't look the same shape but all the same are so they have some uh, base d and they have some uh, height h okay uh, and also we have to note that uh, they are uh, their positions when i say position what do i mean uh, okay let me open the question again so the, uh, we are given the y i values right so uh, what is the y i value uh, the base of the i th triangle so essentially that is uh, this point so in some case this might be y0 this might be y1 and this point might be y2 okay so i hope the question is clear but yeah uh, so let's move on okay right uh, so i have y0 y1 and y2 here so uh, let's see what we can do with this now there are a couple of cases right uh, so i'll start at the top so i'm starting at uh, at the maximum y value we are given y's in the in the increasing order basically but i'll start at the top why am i starting at the top uh, you will understand as i code it up that's because if you think about this uh, the top triangles area will always be included but for some of the bottom triangles the area might not always be included like the area might be a bit cut off also area will be cut off because there is some other triangle sitting on top of it but the first tri first uh, triangle's area will like the topmost triangle's area will never be removed so that's why i'm starting at the topmost uh, triangle over here so i hope i'm being clear in that also one more formula we need is uh, area of trapezium uh why do we need area of trapezium that's because let's say if you have a triangle some triangle that gets cut off right uh in that case uh, we need this i'll explain this in a while but yeah okay so let's have a look at the two cases first case might be like this okay no overlap if there is no overlap i have to paint the entire thing so uh, this is my current index what is my current index uh, my current position is the base of the upper triangle the base of the upper triangle is my current index so if there is no overlap then it's fine it's just a uh, half base times height let's look at the other case okay where there is some overlap uh, okay it looks something a bit like this okay and drawing skills aren't that good as i told you already now you might be able to see that this thing that is my new area that is being added that's a trapezium right and what is the area of trapezium it's a uh, half times uh, d1 uh, uh, like half times height times uh, the upper line essentially the uh, like one of the two parallel lines like some of the links of the two parallel line segments so i hope that makes sense right okay um, right so i have to add up the area of this triangle but it's a bit painful so let's see how we can calculate the area of this triangle um so i'll zoom this up a bit okay uh we have something like this and we have some line that looks like this and then we have this okay now uh, as i told you already the base of the previous triangle is my current index what is current index current index is the base of the previous triangle uh, so i have this current index here now let's see what will be this length 
okay what do we want to know we know what is uh, like we want to know what is this length okay how will you find out what is this length let's think about this right i know this is yi what is yi yi is the base of the current triangle so i know what is yi i know what is current so how big is this line uh this line is just uh yi minus current right like so the the length of this this uh, line which i have made dark over here that's just yi minus current uh so so that's one thing to note now uh, what we really want to know is this height here you will understand very quickly why that's true why we need the particular height but that height is really uh h the total height minus yi minus current okay it's, it's just total height uh, minus yi minus current so uh, that will be this particular height here now you might uh, know this property uh, of tangents right uh, so what will be tan theta here tan theta will be this unknown this unknown i, I think i called it uh, some x in my code i'm not sure what it, okay i called it l1 right okay so I'll, let's call this unknown to be l1 so what will be l1 uh, like if you take the tangents l1 will be uh, l1 by uh, h minus y minus current will be uh, this whole thing what is this whole thing whole thing is really d by 2 okay whole thing is d by 2 so it will be uh, d by 2 by h okay so i hope this equation is clear now i did a small thing here i call this entire thing to be l1 like the entire length is l1 so we have an l1 by 2 here also so the by 2s by 2s cancel out so uh, what is the final expression for l1 that is the length of the top part that is really just uh, d by h times uh, h minus y a minus current okay so uh, that's the base of the trapezium so we can just uh, using that we can just find the area directly so i'm being clear in this there are probably other ways to do this also this probably is a way but i couldn't think of it during the contest so uh, i guess this works right i'll show you my uh, implementation also uh, have a look at this implementation pretty carefully Uh, because it's not exactly very easy implementation. It has some, uh, uh, like I mean, if you haven't dealt with uh, floats before, it might have some issues. Uh, like if you haven't worked with floats before, uh, you might run into some issues. Because answer can be a floating point number, right? As you might have realized, uh, answer is not necessarily an integer. It can be a floating point number also. So uh, I'll come to the the details of the implementation a bit later. Uh, but let's first look at the basics, right? So first of all, I'm just uh, adding the height of the top triangle. So uh, what did I do? I first took in all the the y coordinates. That is my array AI. Now I just reversed it. Why reverse? Because I told you it's easier to start off at the top than at the bottom. It's really the same thing. It doesn't matter too much. Uh, but yeah. Okay, right. Uh, hopefully that's fine. So I've also initialized my current to be A zero because that will be my uh, base of the previous triangle. And then what am I doing? I'm um, adding the area of the topmost triangle. Now I'm just iterating over all the remaining triangles. Now what are we doing? So this is the case in which there is no overlap. If a i plus h is less than or equal to current, uh, what is a i and what is h? A i is this part, right? Uh, a i is this base. Uh, you can see it in my screen here. This a i, this is h. So uh, essentially, this point, the top of the triangle is a i plus h. If a i plus h is smaller than current, then there is no overlap. so i just add the area of this triangle uh, but in the other case this is how how i told you the area of the trapezium formula that we get the l1 is the same thing i told you the formula for the for one of the bases of the trapezium and to that i am adding half times uh, d d is one of the bases of the triangle uh, sorry of the trapezium l1 is the base of the other trapezium like the other other base of the trapezium and the height is current minus a Uh, why is height current minus y? Because the height of the trapezium is just uh, like current minus y. Oh wait, uh, also I think there's typo here. I think it should be current minus y everywhere because current is bigger, right? Okay, um, I fixed that. But yeah, hopefully that's clear. I'm just doing current minus uh, y everywhere, right? Well, I'm also setting current to be y here. So is that clear? Is the basic idea clear? You can put it in the chat box if anything again. Um, I'll be willing to help you, right? Okay. Anyways, right. Uh, so the implementation thing I told you about. First thing I've done is I've defined floats to be a long double. Why have I done this? Because uh, working with floats is not precise enough. Like they are saying that the answers need to be uh, 
to be accurate uh, within 10 power minus 6. Like if the correct answer is something, it has to be accurate to the 10 power minus 6. And if we want to achieve that, uh, floats might not be accurate enough. And for that reason, we uh, use uh, doubles. Now, doubles might be enough. Uh, doubles uh, are essentially more precise than floats. But long doubles are even more precise and we can just use long doubles. So hopefully that's fine. That's why I'm using long doubles here. So after you're uh, using long doubles, just uh, copy this line and put it in your code. So this will give you the answer correct to the 30 decimal places. So basically it will ensure that you'll have enough decimal places. I mean even separation of 10 should be enough. But anyways, uh, so this line just ensures that you don't have any floating point errors. Because uh, you might always have some floating point errors when you're dealing with floats. Especially C++ is uh, fairly well known for it. So, uh, yeah, so I'm just outputting all of those things here. So is that clear? Any doubts? Uh, okay, someone is saying partially accepted by, by brain. Yeah, uh, okay, fine. I hope uh, that's clear. So is the implementation clear? Is all of my float implementation also clear? Okay. Uh, I'm assuming there are no more doubts. Okay. In the chat box, someone asked a while ago to see my profile. So I show it to you <laughs> if you want. Uh, okay. Uh, so my maximum rating is a candidate master. So um, yeah, I think that's my profile. Seems good. No? I think it's pretty good. But anyways, uh, let's move on to the next question. Problem E, right? Uh, I'll directly explain the solution for E2 to you. Or, or maybe should I explain E1? I'm not sure. Okay, uh, what if I don't use fixed? Okay, um, it's not necessary that you use fixed, uh, but like, I mean, it makes it a bit easier if you use fixed, that's all. Uh, it's it's a implementation thing. It's not necessary, just a part of a standard template that I'm using. So, uh, hopefully that's clear, right? Okay, right, uh, let's move on to E1. Again, as usual, you can uh, pause the video and have a look at the thing. Now, uh, by the way, E1 and E2, so I'll directly show E2 to you. I think that makes a bit more sense. I explain the hard version to you directly. Uh, so for E2, what was the solution? This, uh, like the difference is n is like 10 power 18. So you, you can again pause the video and have a look at the question. Okay. Hopefully I'm, I'm assuming you had to look at the question. Anyways, because it's a uh, E2 problem, I'll also explain the question once. So uh, I think that should be fine. Okay, right. Uh, so we have a snowflake graph here, right? So uh, for problem uh, E1 and E2, we have something called a snowflake graph. So in the snowflake uh, graph, what is the important thing? We have some central node kind of here. From this, we have k nodes arising. So I'll draw it for k equals three. From this, we have three nodes arising. From each of the three nodes, we have uh, three more nodes arising. Okay. I'll draw it for k equals 2 also. Uh, so for k equals 2, what will it be? Mm, it will be something like this, right? Okay. But turns out, what we are saying is that we can actually do this more than two times also. Like we don't necessarily have to do the snow snake snow flake uh, step just uh, twice. We can do it one more time also. So I can add case here one more time also. Okay. So I hope I'm being clear in that. Okay. Uh, right. Someone has asked in the chat box, uh, is it more advisable to use long double instead of double in C++? So uh, honestly, this is for CP, okay? If you're probably uh, coding out some software or something, then it might not be necessary. But in CP, uh, long double should fit in the time constraints most of the time. So you can just define it to be long double, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, so in questions involving the decimal outputs, we can stick to long double. I think uh, it can't hurt you. That's what I feel. Yeah, right? Okay, uh, hopefully that's clear. Uh, okay, anyways, let's move on. So uh, what is the point of a snowflake graph here? Let's look at the important thing, right? Uh, if we have, uh, let's say, uh, L leaves. 
hopefully you know what is a leaf right leaf is just the essentially a node in a graph um there is only a parent basically like uh, it's the size of the adjacency list is one that's one way to think about this so if you have l leaves uh, every time you do this operation l times k nodes are added okay so that's the important observation here if there are l leaves there are l times k nodes added and also note that we initially start with one leaf we start with one leaf that's actually the root node itself so uh, how many nodes will we have right let's think about this the first time i'll start with just one node the next time i do the operation k new nodes will be added so i'll have 1 plus k nodes in total second time i do this i'll have 1 plus k plus uh, k squared nodes in total third time i do this i'll have 1 plus k plus uh, k cube sorry k squared plus k cube nodes in total etc etc right so uh, i'll basically have 1 plus k plus k squared plus k cube all the way up to some k power i uh, nodes in total okay okay uh, in the chat we have a question so the problem is we can take penalty and points for uh, for assuming oh yeah even that works yeah so someone just took the like rank of people and penalty and they just take the people as superior or not even that works no issues i think uh, implementation wise that might be a bit easier than what i did but yeah uh, seems fine right okay anyways right uh, okay let's move on so uh, as i told you this is essentially a geometric progression it's a geometric sum really and uh, we have that many nodes in total now what is our aim we are given n okay so we are given the value of n what we are checking is that is is n equal to k like essentially this sum for some k comma i that's basically what we are checking so what are we checking we are checking if n equals this uh, sum for some k and i if it's uh, equal for some k and i then we are good right so uh, by the way i has to be uh, greater than or equal to 2 because essentially the stove flake operation needs to be done at least two times so i has to be greater than or equal to 2 okay now uh, for e1 n was uh, 10 power 6 so for 10 power 6 you could just uh, brute force the thing like uh, you could just have a look at all possibilities and just brute force it i think that's fine we we'll have a look at e2 where n was 10 power 18 okay one small thing if you didn't know in uh, c++ if you uh, have seen this before If n is like 10 power 18, you have to use long long. What is long long? Long long is essentially integers with uh, more digits possible. So the integers C++ they have a definite size you can have. Uh, long longs don't have the size limitation. So I'm being clear on that. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's move on. For E2, what is my solution? So I think the intended solution was uh, binary search uh, plus. uh like iteration binary search basically but uh, i think i did something completely different so i'll show you my solution also okay so uh, let's look at the case where uh, this i is, is greater than or equal to 3 so uh, essentially we have uh, more than four terms uh, basically so 1 plus k plus k is k plus k cube all the way up to k power i but i is greater than or equal to 3 okay note that i can be 2 also we we'll look at that case separately so uh, here i is greater than or equal to 3 so what can be k here so what are all the various possibilities for k well k has to be between 2 all the way up to uh, 10 power 6 right why is this because uh, if we take k cube 10 power 6 cube will be 18 uh, will be 10 power 18 uh, so k can be anywhere between 2 up to 10 power 6 so what are all the various k uh, values for a cubic term k can be anywhere from 2 to 10 power 6 okay so we'll store all of those in a set and we'll just check for all of them so uh, i'll explain to you that uh, part of my code i'll quickly explain that to you so uh, i have a set here okay uh, i have a set called a what does the set a contain set a contains uh, 
every single possibility like every single cubic fourth order fifth order sixth order everything that is uh, smaller than 10 power 18 okay so uh, what are we doing here we are initializing sum to be 1 plus k then initializing current to be equal to k and then uh, i'm just running a while loop here if uh, i'm just multiplying this current times k this current is the number of leaves i have hopefully that's clear uh, okay and then uh, i'm adding this current to sum every time and i'm inserting all of the sums into e so what will this do for instance if k equals 2 it will uh, insert so if, if let's say uh, i was equal to 2 it will uh, try to insert uh, 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared right that's uh, 7 it will insert that if i equals 3 it will insert 15 if i equals 4 it will insert uh, 31 etc right so you can keep doing this because for k equals 3 also it will keep doing all of this it will keep doing this until we reach 10 power 18 so if we reach 10 power 18 it will break okay so until we reach 10 power 18 this will uh, keep doing this and after that it will break like this we are doing till k equals 10 power 6 at k equals 10 power 6 what will happen uh, we will have only 3 steps i can be 3 after that we will be stopping this okay so uh, i hope that's clear here so i'm just taking 10 power 18 and i'm just breaking after that after we are done here note that this will have at most 60 possibilities why is that because 2 power 60 is approximately 10 power uh, like essentially uh, 2 power uh, 10 is 10 power 3 so 2 power 60 is 10 power 18 uh, roughly it's not exactly but 2 power 60 is 10 power 18 so if we check till all the powers up to uh, 60 it should be enough so we just take it till 10 power 18 here so i hope i make clear on that okay uh, right so i just checked all the possibilities here now comes the case in when i equals 2 because we haven't checked for i equals 2 till now now what is the issue if we just use i equals 2 in the above thing if we just use i equals 2 in the above thing k can be 10 power 9 so if we just use it k will be like 10 power 9 and that will give me a tle so that will give me a time limit exceeded error so i can't do that okay instead what do we do instead we uh, try something else different uh, uh, okay so Shubham has asked the time complexity, right? So time complexity for everything above this, that will be 60 times uh, 10 power 6. Okay? But note that it's a constant because we're just doing it one time for all of the elements. Like, uh, we're not doing it per test case. It's something I'm pre-computing. So I'll show my code to you uh, in a while. But uh, let's finish this case for i equals 2 first. So if i equals 2, what can I say? You can say the 1 plus k plus k squared equals n. Okay? If 1 plus k plus k squared equals n, that means I can say that k squared plus k plus 1 minus n is equal to 0. Then what should be k? k equals uh, minus 1 plus or minus square root of 1 minus 4 1 minus n uh, by 2. Okay. This comes from the quadratic formula. Now if k is an integer, I am good. Okay. k is an integer, I am good. If k is not an integer, then it can't be a correct solution. Okay, so basically k has to be an integer, that's what we are checking here. So essentially that's my algorithm. So for any i that's greater than 3, we can just do the above pre-computing thing I told you and we can just uh, like bluntly check all the possibilities. For k equals 2k, so we have to check the quadratic equation. If the quadratic equation ends up being an integer, then we are fine. Otherwise we have problems. Right, hopefully I am being clear on that. Okay, uh, right. So uh, Ayush wants me to explain why uh, per value of k there are 60 operations right okay um, i'll explain that so you might know that uh, 2 power 60 is 10 power 18 okay so uh, 2 power 60 equals 10 power 18 so since 2 power 60 uh, is equal to 10 power 18 uh, i'm just summing up different powers of 2 right since i'm just summing up different powers of 2 since 2 power 60 is equal to 10 power 18 i'll be doing at most uh, 60 operations now 60 operations for 2 okay for 3 it will be much lesser because uh, 3 power 60 is actually much larger than 10 power 18 so for 3 it will be a uh, much lesser number of uh, of powers basically so it's 60 for 2 but for 3 if it will be 60 for uh, 3 it will be much lesser so uh, what will it be actually it will be log to the base 3 of 10 power 18 
so essentially the 60 is just an upper bound it's not exactly 60 times k uh, like it's not 60 times uh, 10 power 6 exactly it's 60 for 2 and if you keep doing this uh, is actually just uh, just one possibility for uh, 10 power 6 right uh, like it's just three possibilities for 10 power 6 but uh, an upper bound for this sum would be 60 times uh, 10 power 6 am i being clear in that okay i was just saying okay that's good any other notes you can put in the chat box also uh, but yeah uh, let's keep moving so i'll show you through my uh, code also so in my code i'm doing this pre-computing so i have a global array called a global set called a really so in this global set called a i'm just uh, doing the thing i told you uh, this is true for the case where uh, i'm just doing till 10 power 6 i'm doing for i values uh, greater than uh, 3 basically so i'm just taking till 10 power 6 here if my k was 10 power 7 or 10 power 8 then what do i do then i use the quadratic thing so uh, if if my uh, set of a's that contains this value of n that means n is possible to reach for some value of k that means we are good that means i'm just outputting that here if that is not possible then i'm just using quadratic formula i'm using a float to get the answer here so i'm just using uh, the, the like this kind of expression in which uh, we use a quadratic formula and get the corresponding root i'm just rounding off that root uh, i'm making this an integer now if that one plus that integer plus that integer square is equal to n and uh, b has to be greater than 2 now b is really the value of k here uh, so if you're confused about that b is just k here if uh, this thing is true that means for i equals 2 it's possible to reach that node then we are good otherwise it, it outputs no to me so i'm being clear in that hopefully my explanation is clear any doubts okay uh showing us thing uh they got tle in e2 uh if you iterate till 10 power 9 you'll get tle but as i told you if you do the smart thing and iterate till uh, 10 power uh 6 uh like if you uh, iterate till 10 power 6 then uh, it should be possible and for uh, i equals 2 just use the quadratic formula so is that fine okay someone suggests me to use uh, late code problems uh, so if you are able to manage that also we will try to do late code problems sure i think that's a good idea we will try to do that uh, later but yeah, if there are no more doubts i'll move on to the next question okay right um, i'm assuming there are no more doubts okay so uh, let's move on to f problem so um, f is an uh, interactive problem if you haven't seen interactive problem before there are guides for interactive problems you can just check out that link uh, again you can have a look at the uh, the question here i'll give you some uh, few seconds to have a look at it Okay, uh, so we are in the last problem I solved. Okay, uh, right. Okay, let's see what we can do. So, um, so we have person called uh, Rudolf here. We have a bunch of mimics, uh, and they are all mixed up. So, uh, okay. So we'll see uh, this thing here. Okay, um, Shubham is saying uh, me to explain this approach about uh, binary search and iteration. Okay, uh, I didn't do that, so I'm not exactly sure, but I can tell you the basics. So uh, we just iterate over all uh, possibilities here. Like uh, so, so that solution was basically uh, iterate over i from two all the way up to sixty. Okay, why till sixty? It's sixty because for the same reason two power sixty is uh, ten power eighty. It's the uh, exact same reason why we are iterating till sixty. Now for all of these, basically. Uh, we can do binary search to find if there is some value of k for which uh, like that sum equals n basically so like uh, this uh, initialize some l equals 0 some uh, k can be at most uh, like log to the base i of uh, 10 power 18 right so uh, like my lower bound is uh, lower bound has to be 2 actually right my lower bound is 2 and upper bound is log to the base i of 10 power 18 so uh, then what will I do and just take some uh, mid and that mid will be L plus R over 2 and again I just check uh, 1 plus 
mid plus mid square plus mid cube all the way up to mid power uh, mid power i here and I'll just check if it's equal to n or not so I can just binary search on that so am I being clear in that like that's the basic idea um, you can have a look at uh, someone else's solution maybe hopefully that's fine okay okay right uh, Anyways, let's move on to f problem for now. So uh, f problem I felt was a pretty nice problem. It's an interactive problem also. So uh, what is the problem here? There are a bunch of uh, numbers. So we'll have a look at the example test case here. So the the initial numbers given are I think uh, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3. Okay. Uh, n equals 5. So this is problem f basically. Okay, uh, so for uh, n equals 5, uh, the various values are 1, 1, uh, 2, 2, and 3. So, uh, in this, what we can do? One of them is a mimic. Okay, we don't know who is a mimic for now. So, um, one of them is mimic. Okay, but who is the mimic is what we have to find out, right? Uh, so, who is mimic? Uh, let's think about this carefully. So, uh, initially, we don't know who is the mimic. Anyone could be the mimic, okay? Now, what we can do is two things. First thing, we can uh, choose a bunch of positions and just remove those uh, those positions. So I just choose a bunch of positions and just get rid of them. So hopefully I'm being clear in that. Uh, so I can just get rid of this one and I can just get rid of this two. So hopefully that's fine. I can just choose whatever indices I want to get rid of them. Okay. After I have gotten rid of them, the remaining people, okay, like the remaining positions are one, two, and three. First thing is they might get shuffled. So they might get shuffled as let's say. 2, 1, 3 also. So, shuffling is one thing uh, that might happen. Mimic might change. So, the first thing that could happen is uh, they could get shuffled. The mimic might change into some something, okay. Okay. So, the mimic could change into something, but uh, we don't know what the mimic changes into, but the mimic might change, change into something, okay. Uh, so, that's how we start off with. So uh, let's see what we can do about this. So initially, we are given uh, this array 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, right? Now uh, I'm going to tell you that the mimic is at position 1. But uh, assume we don't know that the mimic is at position 1 for now. So we'll see what we can do, right? Uh, also, one more thing. I told you you can remove a bunch of indices, right? When you are removing indices, cannot remove a mimic. If you remove a mimic, We can never remove a mimic. If you remove a mimic, we'll get uh, some, some uh, like basically wrong answer kind of. Okay, that's one thing. But let's look at one even more very very important thing. The very important thing is, mimic can't be in the same position for uh, cannot remain the same object for two stages in a row. So basically, that means mimic cannot be the same number uh, twice in a row. And that's actually very important because uh, that makes uh, this, this very interesting. Okay. Now, uh, let's think about this, right? In the first time, can you remove anything? And the answer is no. Because the first time, you can never remove anything. Because any position might be the mimic. You don't know what is the mimic. So first time, we won't do anything. We have to remain idle. Okay? So, uh, first time, I'll just output plus zero. We have to remain idle. We don't have a choice. Okay? Now, I make it 1, 1, 2, 2, 3 again. Now, there are a bunch of possibilities. I make it 1, 1, 2, 2, 3 again. Or, the mimic might change. Okay, turns out in this case, uh, the mimic changed into I think, uh, okay, let me check once. I think it just changed into, uh, okay, it changed to a, uh, okay, we, I mean, there is something different, I guess. So, uh, we'll assume it changed into 2 for now. So, let's say our array was something like this, okay, two possibilities. First possibility was uh, mimic changed, second possibility is no change, okay. Also, I'm always writing the array in sorted order. That's because anyways the things get shuffled, so we can always sort them. So we just keep everything sorted. Hopefully that's clear. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, so that's why I'm keeping everything sorted because the order doesn't matter anyways. And there are two possibilities. One is no change. One is some change. Okay. If there's some change, then it's fine. Uh, we'll think about what we can do. If there is no change, then what do we do? Then we output one more plus zero. Okay. What are we doing? We're outputting one more plus zero. Now the mimic has to change. Why does mimic have to change? That's because the, the mimic can't be the same thing for uh, two 
turns in a row or two stages in a row right so that means mimic has to change so here we are really forcing it to change and and let's say the mimic at the first position changes to a two so our array will be something like one two two three okay so uh, what is my point here my point was uh, the mimic has to change at the second term if they haven't changed in the first term they have to change in the second term and uh, that's pretty interesting now let's think about this right what are the various possibilities for the mimic and, and the answer is we can't say for sure uh, but you can say one thing right uh, the number of twos increased so definitely the the mimic is a two right now so the mimic is either this or also uh, these two are now equivalent right so hopefully that's clear uh, x in this we basically wait till a turn and force the mimic to change uh, so we can say both of these are equivalent so i hope i'm being clear in that but yeah now, now that these two are equivalent um, i'll take uh, this thing here now we can say that the mimic is a two now for sure okay mimic is definitely not a one or three uh, why is that because the number of twos just increased that means one of the ones must have changed into a two so that means the the mimic is a two for sure that means they are definitely not a one or a three okay in this case what all indices do we remove uh, we can just remove all the indices which are not a two so in this case i'll just do minus two one three so basically this will remove this index and this index okay again now also there are two possibilities okay after i've done this operation mimic might change or might not change okay now if the mimic changes then good right it will be something like 3 to 2 so essentially the odd one out here that odd one out will be our mimic so mimic will be let's say 2 to 2 change to 3 to 2 that uh, the index which is different from the from the other index that will be a mimic so hopefully that's clear now if it does not change what will happen to if it does not change let's think about what happens if it does not change it will be same thing again right so it will be 2 to 2 again now we we'll just wait for one more turn okay now the mimic has to change and and let's assume it changes to a 3 let's say so it has to change in the next turn right so now it changes to 3 to 2 that means the the mimic will be at the first index so we just output that here so is that clear now look at the chat once okay uh, hopefully no doubts but yeah okay fine uh, right so that was the basic idea here we just did a bunch of case work i felt the implementation was a bit painful but yeah um, so what we do let's have a look at it again so um, in the first case we didn't remove anything because we don't know what is a mimic so in the first case we just remain idle now the array could be same or it could be different if it was the same we'll do plus 0 for one more turn if we do plus 0 for one more turn in that case it has to change okay now the array has changed so we know uh, what number the mimic might be right now so we just remove everything else so we just get rid of everything else okay now my array is just a bunch of twos like 2 to 2 kind of after that what do we do we just do plus 0 again so from 2 to 2 if it has changed to something else the 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 mimic might change right so if the mimic decides to change then it will be 3 to 2 that's fine otherwise the mimic might remain idle so if the mimic was idle uh, then we just wait for one more turn in that case it has to change so am i being clear in that hopefully that's clear again if you have any doubts you can ask in the chat box always uh, but yeah uh, so let's move on to my uh, submission so uh, first thing let me show you i have a bunch of frequency errors here the probably was a better way to implement this but fine um, so first i'm just doing some hk here if n equals 1 i am just uh, outputting zero here and i'm doing uh, indel after that so hopefully that's fine right uh, now after that what are we doing so um, after that let's think about this so i have a bunch of arrays called frequency frequency how do they have frequency arrays why are the frequency arrays because uh, essentially if you look at this uh, all the a's are from 1 to 9 so i'm just using frequency array to store them there probably is a better way to store this also but i think this works for now okay okay right uh, so uh, as you can see here i'm just uh, taking this initial a as the input now i have a check function check function it just takes in two arrays as input and it just uh, tells you if a particular index is bigger in the second frequency array so uh, i i'll explain this here so if you look at uh, let's say two cases so i'll take the arrays 1 2 2 2 3 and 
टू टू थ्री थ्री ओके हेयर इट मीन्स द मेमिक हेज चेंज लाइक अ टू हेज चेंज टू थ्री राइट सो इफ यू लुक एट द फ्रीक्वेंसी अरे फॉर दिस दैट बी समथिंग लाइक वन सॉरी वन थ्री वन एंड बंस ऑफ जीरो आफ्टर दैट बट इफ यू लुक एट द फ्रीक्वेंसी अरे ऑफ दिस इट विल बी वन टू टू एंड बंस ऑफ जीरो आफ्टर दैट so basically on the second array whichever index is bigger whichever index is bigger on the on the second array this corresponds to 3 right so whichever uh, value is bigger on the second frequency array that means the mimic has changed to that number so it has changed to 3 here like the this numerical value on that doesn't matter i'm saying the position of that matters so this 3 matters okay okay so th that is basically my solution uh, so uh, i'm just outputting that here I'm also putting minus one if both the frequency arrays are just equal. So, uh, so as I told you, the first thing we are doing is just we are we are outputting uh, like minus zero here, and I'm just taking b n as the input. Okay, so uh, we just uh, outputting minus zero first. That is not doing anything, not removing anything. I'm just taking b n as the input. Then what are we doing? We are taking some n as the input, uh, and then we are just calcu calculating the frequency array. So for the new uh, New B essentially, I'm calculating the frequency array. So, if our EQ was the old frequency array for the initial input, so that was the frequency array for uh, the input given here, basically. Okay. Uh, after that, I'm uh, calculating F R E Q Q. F R E Q Q is the modified frequency array after we output minus zero. Okay. Now there are two possibilities, as I told you. The frequency arrays might be equal. If they are equal, the the mimic hasn't changed. Then in that case, mm num will be equal to minus one. So mm num will be minus one. In that case, we do the same thing I told you again. So again we go through the same process. Okay. Uh, so, but of course, if that's not the case, if it, there is mimic hard change, mm num will be, will be equal to something. So we don't have to go through this process again. Uh, so hopefully that's clear. So we have found out what number the mimic is right now. Then what are we doing? Uh, so so then I think it's just a bunch of implementation. So uh, I have this uh, output. Essentially, that's the index of all of the outputs. Does that make sense? Uh, so I'm just checking whichever output uh, is is not equal to mm num. So whichever positions are not mm num, I have to remove all of those things. So I'm just uh, like essentially throwing all of that into my out array. After that, I'm just removing all of them. So I'm just uh, bluntly removing all of those things. All right. Hopefully that's clear. Okay. Uh, so what am I doing? I'm just uh, In this thing, I'm just removing all the indices which are not uh, the current number of uh, of that uh, that mimic here. So hopefully, I'm being clear on that. Okay. Um, after that, what are we doing? Uh, uh, again, we are calculating one more frequency array. Now, uh, again, this frequency array uh, we are checking. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Before that, uh, I'll tell you what this line of code does. what this line of code does is that it creates the modified frequency array so after we have, we have done the above checks my uh, thing will look something like uh, like after i have removed all the the elements i have to remove it will be something like 0 0 0 my desired element and then 0 0 0 right so my frequency array will look something like this so uh, this will be something like uh, 11 or something right how many ever uh, like times that thing occurs so that's what this particular code does it's the frequency after we have removed everything now again we're checking if the mimic has changed or not now uh, since the the mimic uh, may may or may not have changed if in this case it has changed then good right if it has changed then good for us uh, here we are checking if it hasn't changed if it hasn't changed we wait for one more move we don't do anything for one more move then in that case also if it uh, hasn't changed if the mimic hasn't changed for one more like i mean it has to change this move so if it changes in this move uh, then we are just calculating the frequency here and we are defining mm num here finally what i am checking is uh, if the i th element in current if that's equal to uh, e equal to the mimic like whichever portion is equal to the mimic i am just outputting that here okay and it should never go through this so hopefully this is fine but yeah uh, i think that's f solution i felt it was pretty nice question any doubts you can put in the chat box
uh, I, I'm assuming there are not many doubts, so we'll keep going. But yeah, uh, okay, right. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Uh, no, uh, I could have solved J problem, but uh, I got an idea for J problem. So maybe I'll explain that before we finish this. Um, I think the idea has to do with bit masks. So you can maybe try this uh, in a while. But uh, saying this, I think that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, if you have any doubts, you can put it right now in the chat box. Otherwise, I'll end the live stream. Uh, by the way, uh, you might have heard this. We are uh, essentially keeping a summer camp, right? Uh, so if you haven't attended those sessions, you can try attending those also. I think that will be pretty good. Uh, after this, we'll make this a video also, so you can even have a look at the finished video editorial. Hopefully, that will help you solve some problems. Okay. If there are no doubts, I'll end the stream. Okay, I'm just assuming there are no doubts. So uh, let's end the stream for now. But guys, uh, if you have any doubts, uh, you can put it afterwards in the comment section also. Hopefully that's fine. Uh, but thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Hari Charan. See you.